I'm Andre Stewart, CEO of 21st Century Forensic Animations. And I'm Todd Davis, Vice President of Animation for 21st Century Forensic Animations. Welcome to our five minute primer on terrestrial laser scanning. We want to show you some new technology that can have a significant impact on your cases. Terrestrial laser scanning is simply a process or a method of accurately measuring three-dimensionally either objects or scenes. Think of it as a three-dimensional photograph. There are many types of laser scanning. There's satellite, airborne, bathymetry, mobile, uh, terrestrial, and even handheld. So today we're going to focus on terrestrial laser scanning and Todd's going to show you how. This unit is the Ferro Focus 3D 330. We have set the unit on a tripod and powered it up and now we will select the scanning parameters. In this case we're going to select outdoors greater than 20 meters. The unit will now emit billions of beams of light. Those beams will strike an object, return to the unit where they are recorded. This creates a very large cloud of three-dimensional points or a point cloud. So I'm going to place a cone and a quarter in the scene so that we have a frame of reference to view at the scans back at the office. Unlike a laser transit, the ferro will measure everything within its line of sight. After the scanning is complete, the unit will take color photos of the scene just as it's measured. The unit also captures GPS information as well as quality control data. The published accuracy of each scan is approximately one-eighth of an inch. The process takes about 12 minutes per scan outdoors and approximately five minutes for indoor scans. To scan a larger scene, we simply move the scanner around the scene approximately 75 feet from the prior scan location. Let's go ahead and start the scan. Here we are set up in the second scan location, which is approximately 75 feet from the prior location. Each of these scans will have common objects between them, such as expansion joints, reflective pavement markers, and other landmarks. These landmarks will help us later on in the office tie the two scans together. There are many advantages in laser scanning. The first is the completeness of the data. The unit measures everything in the line of sight. The second is the accuracy. It's accurate to about one-eighth of an inch over 150 feet, and we set the unit up every 150 feet. And the third is the quality of the data. It allows us to do close-range photogrammetry and be able to extract information from photographs of the scene. And the third, as the prices of these have dropped significantly in the last few years, so we commonly used them in the law enforcement fields and also in other forensic engineering firms. So now it's become the standard of measure. So now that we've completed the scans, let's go ahead and head back to the office. Now that we're back in the office, let's remove the SD card from the scanner, download the data, and begin the post-processing. The two scans have been loaded into the software that will perform the registration. We can view each scan's planar view, depicting the scene from the scanner's perspective. This is the 3D scan flattened out in 2D. We can zoom in or out and also measure objects. For instance, let's see what the diameter of this pipe is. comes to right at about five feet. Now let's load up the 3D view. This view shows the point cloud in its entirety. We can take a look around just like we did in the previous planar view, but since this is a 3D view, we can change our viewpoint and fly around the scene. Though the two point clouds are loaded, they're not linked. Let's tie these two scans together, or register them, so that we have one combined point cloud containing both scans. Now we have a fully registered point cloud. We see here the color of the traffic signal icon is green indicating the software was able to tie the two scans together with a high level of accuracy. If we take a look at the scan manager's statistics, 
we can see to what level of accuracy the scans were tied together. The overall difference between the two scans is 0.0614 inches. In other words, the overall difference between the two scans is less than the thickness of a quarter. Let's load up the 3D view of the fully registered point cloud. If we zoom in a little bit, you can easily tell where our two scan setups were. There are two icons that indicate this that look like the scanner. One right here and the other right here. We can rotate around the scene, fly through it, and even view the point cloud from an orthographic view. This is the plan view and let's switch back to perspective. Let's zoom in and locate the cone and quarter that Andre placed when we were at the scene. We can clearly identify our cone, which is about three inches high. However, the quarter is slightly less than an inch in diameter and this displays the effective limit of laser scanning. So we should not expect to effectively measure items smaller than one half of an inch. This is the beauty of the technology. The comprehensive nature of laser scanning allows us to capture every measurement we need and every measurement we don't need. This is extremely useful because often at the time of scanning your scene, you may not have a complete idea of what you need to measure. Laser scanning allows us to capture an incident scene, record, and store it digitally forever. This is the best manner to permanently document the physical evidence, which may not exist days or weeks later. Another additional benefit is the ability to share this data with others, such as opposing counsel and experts. This is webshare to go and it contains all of the software to view, navigate, measure, and explore the point cloud without the user having to install anything. Immediately upon loading, we can see a plan view of the fully registered point cloud and can identify the two scan locations recorded in the field. By hovering over them, we can see the extent that each scan covered. We can load the panorama view, just like we did earlier, and see what the scene looked like from the perspective of the scanner. From here, we can load the 3D view, and again, navigate and fly around the scene to any point we wish. We can also view and measure any objects that were captured in the line of sight by the scanner. And all of this data can be stored right here and sent overnight. All of your cases, whether civil or criminal, occur in a three-dimensional world. So it is critically important to measure and memorialize the scene and the physical evidence three-dimensionally. That physical evidence tells the story of your case but it disappears quickly. The sooner the scan occurs, the better the data. It will save you and your client a lot of time and money. And with the price of a laser scan starting at about $1,500 plus travel, there's really no reason not to scan your scene. Well, I hope you found this video informative. Our next primer will cover close range photogrammetry, which is how we reconstruct an accident or crime scene with the use of photo or image documentation. So until then, I'm Andre. And I'm Todd. Thanks.